DJ Moss obviously used to compete alongside Ebates in that World Series of Warzone, but post that, we had a lot of roster changes, but our teams, they need to get into that top 15, and well, map number four, we are getting locked, we are getting loaded, and Savvy Ultras, your map three winners are out here selecting, and we're going to see the start of the game from their POV. Yeah, it'll be, uh, if you want to take a look at that leaderboard, it'll be curious to see which teams continue to totally shift up this leaderboard as we go along. If you want to take a look at that leaderboard, exclamation point leaderboard, it will take a little while to get updated as it is all at the behest of players submitting their scores. So just keep that in mind that, uh, well, as Savvy Ultras gets locked in for whatever he's about to do in this map, uh, it'll take a little bit of time to get that leaderboard update, but that's where you can kind of keep track of all the actual scores. We'll be able to show where they are along the way and even be able to show it a little bit in game potentially as well but uh, as we tune in like you said with the winners of last map uh, electing go with a slightly different strategy than some of our other teams and instead of a most wanted to start they are going to go with a scavenger to start to get their money up get your money up over at pop off power now honestly playing from power is one of those pois that has a lot of end games in customs i told you guys earlier at the top of the show that northwestern side can be crazy Granted, we've had a good mix of end games already thus far, but picking things off with a scavenger isn't as risky as a most wanted. And being in a POI like this, you'll have plenty of supply crates that you'll be able to find cash with, so it should be of no issue to get the money up quick. That's exactly right. Money is key, cash is king. We say at every Warzone tournament since the beginning of time, beginning of the game till now, cash has always been king, especially in customs. And buying back your team is so important. Making sure your resources are up is incredibly important. So Savvy Ultras potentially stay alive just because he was able to buy plates. Not going to be able to stay alive this time, though. Double stack through the door. Tough to win a 1v2. And teammates not there to help, at least not quickly enough. Zanks tries to put some damage down to give himself a bit of reprieve, but it's not enough. The opponent reaches and wins it. And quickly, Savvy Ultras is into the Gulag. Look, they've been here before. They've been destabilized, as it were, before, and they still won the map. So quickly, Savvy's back onto it. We'll see what he does with his time and what he does with his life. Savvy with a clean Gulag there, but jumping on board over here with Nurse Raquel, Foulnuts, and Devo. Now, we checked in with them in map number one, but we're back here in map number four. But Nurse here going around these crates just trying to get a good angle on that team that is in front of them comms coming through but uh -oh. <laughs> this squad was warming up and a lot of resurgence early today kind of practicing that synergy they do have that scab contract but you do get an inkling of that player that just jumped to her right she calls him out is able to get that crack come through we just need to be able to make that happen oh, but unfortunately two of them will fall and now fall nets well you've got to be the one to clean things up for him this is brutal I, I think they called out a second team which means they're getting third party it's gonna be pretty difficult especially because it seemed like they were in the center kind of getting sandwiched between the two squads getting shot from multiple angles little to nothing you can do especially when grenades come flying in to clean you up but able to just barely grab the, the res and get through back on your feet but She's in trouble. She's getting ego chow and actually not a bad chow. Unfortunately, once she starts shooting her gun, it's that signal flare in the sky of, hey, here I am. She gets picked up from like seven angles. Several teams fighting in this POI and it doesn't look like Nurse Raquel and her team are able to get any sort of victory out of it. Gonna have to relocate, restabilize, try to find a different spot to drop in order to creep back into this top 15 should they fall out of it. Take control of this. Becky with the third party, but now... Ready? Well, out. you've got a bounty up and you've got a UAV up for that information. And this squad, bro, they are ready to lay siege to this building. Yeah, well inside the zone. Continuing to kind of just loot and make sure they're ready to rock and roll. And they're going to swing at this player. That's no problem. Three right, flying through the top no, shelf of this tower. Right, so many people there, guys. Like, so and uh, we take this. Again, we talked about it before that mid and early game. Find the free kills where you can get them. And that's about as free as it gets. I love when teams like always change their name in games to throw stuff off. But we got Louis CM here, Zyro, and Hadzi, and 
they are just carrying this momentum forward, playing so cohesively alongside each other. And yeah, you've got that team that's rotating through military base just in front of them. And immediately pushing the detail together. See, Louis? It's going to be that opening fragger here, trying to grab the high ground. The smokes, though, are going to buy this team in front of them just a little bit of time. And very surprisingly, this trio is actually sitting in 25th place. They only have about 12 points overall, so this is kind of a must-make-a-move moment for this trio. A very strong team. They just maybe are kind of running out of steam in the marathon of tournaments they've been playing today, but yet again, Louis just can't get anything going and goes down. We've seen Zyra on main stage a couple times, and every single time they've just been in trouble and have not been able to keep their feet underneath them. This is Testy on the other side. Picking up one and now two just gets full synth and they can't answer back in time. I don't know what's going on with the trio, but hopefully they can stabilize after a Gulag win here. It's going to be a tough one though. Queen Biddy on the other side. Louis would love to get out of here because the team doesn't have a lot of cash. Holding angles, gets the information, sees the cross, an easy shield crack, just poised and ready with such immense patience. But now, with the rope coming down, has to push a little bit closer. Still looking for nice. that angle, but cleans it up with just 40 HP to boot. Four eliminations for the squad thus far. Yeah, that was a big victory, not only because, well, he gets back into the map without anybody having to spin cash, but because of that slight delay before you get back in, was able to loot up the Gulag and get up to over 7,500 uh, cash in hand, which is a huge win. So, looking to stabilize coming out and potentially get loadout quickly should he need it. Could see that trio move up, but again, I, they, I believe they were in 25th or so going into this lobby, so still a lot of room that they need to make up, still a lot of ground to make up, but definitely still possible with three maps to go and the cutoff for 15th place sitting at 24 total points. It is anybody's game to make it to the finals. Anyone's game, and hopefully Becky and Co. can make their play happen. Congratulations, Becky just dropped that announcement signing to Forbidden today. So that was a huge moment for them. I believe Becky's team, Tiff, is actually sitting in 24th, only a spot ahead of Zyro. So a game that could move them up the leaderboard pretty dramatically, unfortunately. Brolic's picking up Charlie Skinner off screen. Becky's just playing extremely slow to make sure and, and figure out what we should do from here. If, if both of your teammates win the Gulag, you make a very different decision than if they both lose. Becky's going to have to relocate and completely avoid fights for a while in order to get her teammates back. So going to bide her time as we swap POVs. Check out Sunday's stream as she's flying overhead, gathering as much information as possible. Very valuable strategy in order to ensure your team some success. Spots a couple out. Looks like a vehicle has just got a buyback and then is swinging away so they don't get third partied. Uh, a great move by whoever that was, but they've been spotted by this errant recon drone in the air as Bino hopefully will come back for free. I don't feel like enough people actually use those drones to look for information. I know Almond notoriously will be one to immediately pick that up and use it to their benefit, but we'll see and check in back with them later. Over to serve squad that's looking try and gatekeep here on rotation into that zone seven eliminations for the squad thus far and honestly it's not bad pacing yeah not bad at all I have a mini again serve's been playing a lot of customs recently and it looks like becky actually got picked up and both of her teammates down as well this is a must win for becky 24th place on the leaderboard top 15 make we have two more maps but you hate to rely on the final two maps to make a move up the leaderboard unfortunately they're going to have to that's tappa coming back in and well, it seems like it's well needed because teammates nate dog out swish him out fuzz it and pentagon pushing the equation for the first time on screen answering and finding a couple eliminations we'll see maybe a switches team who's inside the top five i believe still will be able to make a move in this fourth map or will they drop down the leaderboard a little bit because of some early frustrations could see a big fight here between rated and savvy ultra squad you can see freddy is already down and out as rated picked them up but a little bit of disengaging moving towards this redeployed drone let's check in with booyah's squad Oof. That was a good check-in. It was a very good check-in. <laughs> That's not even a caster curse. That's an observer <laughs> curse. Shout out our observers. They've been doing great today, but unfortunately, Booyah out of here. 
Swag in trouble does get picked up by Pins, though. This is a trio that has a ton of competitive experience and a ton of pubs experience. Friends, Swag picked up Pins as a pub stomper, been playing together on stream for a while, started picking him up for tournaments as well, and the trio's done fairly well. Unfortunately, not today. Not doing great, but not doing horrible. They're sitting at about 14th place, so right on the edge of that bubble, only 0.5 points ahead of Serve's team. It's going to come down to these razor-thin margins all the way through the final map. So you're getting a glimpse, glimpse at some of the teams on that bubble. You notice what's going wrong. Why are they on the bubble? Well, it's some of these more high-risk gunfights, they just aren't winning. Savvy Ultras, though. He's good at winning those gunfights that he needs to have in to lock in for the resets. They've already got Freddy back into the lobby since the last time we checked in with them. And they're getting their position kind of in that further northwestern side of the circle. Maybe I don't know my directions. This might even be a little more eastern, but my brain sometimes doesn't like to brain. I don't know if anyone can relate with me on that one. <laughs> Respect. It's the cold weather, Tiff. I blame the cold. Always. <laughs> Good comms there. Nice shield crack and a nade to try and finish it out. Will it connect? Yeah, they're going to get that opening knock and full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vine. Thanks to Zanks to be able to clean that up, who just jumped down and immediately full sent. That's the aggressive kind of fragging potential you want on your squad. That's a good team fight there, and I think they, they've kind of learned through the last couple maps. There's been a couple times we tuned into this stream, whether it was Zanks or it was Savvy, where they weren't playing close enough together, and they lost lives because of it. So now they're kind of body stacking, not letting a player go in by themselves, always have each other's trades. It's paying off, and they're getting a ton of utilization out of this recon drone, a ton of resources of information, rather, that they're able to utilize here. A full team of three in a building across from them. They don't necessarily have to push it, but at least they know that they're there which means if they start hearing gunshots in that direction they know exactly where that team is at and what team they could third party and pinch if they're able to sneak over there so they don't have to take the fight but at the very least they know exactly where they are Good comms here, just really highlighting all of the positioning because once that next circle pops and we look for our teams that are going to have to start rotating but taking all the damage and just kind of navigating throughout the window here, stacking up and not a bad rotation. We just have to move a little bit further. So having the drone information on where those teams were and being able to just set their sights on their free building, they run into no issue. Especially for a team like this, you know, we talked about kind of like uh, thinking about the teams on the bubble. A team that's in the top five, honestly, this is kind of how they should be playing. They're not playing hyper aggressive. They're kind of protecting their POI. They're protecting their piece of cover. They're getting information. They're not taking fights that are difficult because they don't have to. They need to score only five, six, seven, eight points at the most per map going forward. And they're likely to be top 10. Unfortunately, other teams are going to have to play hyper aggressive. And well, they're getting slammed because of it. Somehow swings in thinking it's going to be a free kill and finds himself on the other end of two different gun barrels. Not a chance in the world to win the 1v2 and doesn't even get a knock. That's a frustrating loss if you're, and I think that might have been Louis CM, teammates here with uh, Zyro. So I, I don't know what happened, but it didn't go well. Not enough cash to be able to hit that buyback. So they're going to need to either loot up at just a mere... $400 cash or so, but they get the noty that an enemy is dropping back in and immediately run to the roof. But it's going to be the teammate that grabs fall. It's going to be Zyro last alive. And just like that, Youngsta is not able to make it back to the portable buy station. We immediately get one back and we take the choice. It's Louis CM that he gets back. Yeah, it's a big win here for Zyro. Uh, I haven't seen one on main stage here in a while. Was doing really well in the Trials of Earth 16 earlier today. And unfortunately, just been a tough game. Tough tournament, rather, for this trio. They've just been kind of on their heels for the last several maps. They might have a moment here to potentially stabilize with that portable buy on top. If Louis CM can kind of land and loot and grab some cash and get back over to Zyro, maybe they get all three alive and can kind of play for these final couple fights. But continue to swap perspectives. Savvy Ultra is the winners of last map. Again, a 30-point victory. A huge one for them. Has put them into the top five. They've made it to the top 17 thus far. Again, multipliers start at top 20. So a 1.1x multiplier for now and about to change over to a 1.3 inside the top 15. And 
There's a couple kills to potentially push it over the edge. Smoke coming, smoke coming, oh, smoke I love coming. exactly what Zanks and Freddy are doing. Now, Zanks and Freddy, they've played as a duo in a multitude of tournaments. They split their cash load, and Zanks is going to make the play to go ahead and get Savvy Ultras back. And you split your money, because just in case something happens to Zanks at this point, Freddy can go ahead and hit the buy station, immediately pushing the issue. We knew Testy, FPS, and Astro Imagine were already in the vicinity because they were able to grab a knock onto Astro earlier. So Testy was looking to hit that buy back. But just like that works for Zanks, he's able to grab that elimination. Let's check in with the aggressive team of Zelaner and Destroy, though, Ghosh, because I'm curious to see what pacing they're able to set here now. But looks like Raul's fully eliminated. Yeah, not the numbers we've been used to seeing from Destroy the last couple maps. This is map number four and only one elimination. And at this point in the last couple maps, he's had like six, seven, or eight at this point. So definitely a different map for them. Definitely some frustrations likely earlier. Or potentially Z Laner has all the kills. I don't know. They do like to play together as a team. It's certainly possible. But with Raul down, I can only imagine they've had some frustrations this map. They are inside the top 15, so they've secured some multipliers. Every kill going forward is going to be a, a large boon for them. They don't need to drop a banger going forward. They've done the legwork. They've put in the work beforehand. They're going to qualify. It's just a question of where will they end up on the leaderboard unless things go catastrophically wrong. And a, a duo that could do it all, a duo that could win even when outnumbered, Zlaner and Destroy still have a good chance here to do well in this map, but definitely not as many kills as we're used to seeing them have. I mean, aren't they just looking for freebies and just vibing, okay? Look, they said it themselves. They're just trying to get through the game and down to the final 12 squads in that 1.3x multiplier. We could just keep going left. Keep going left. There's a buy, D. You guys don't have enough, though. Yeah, no, we don't have enough. We That's true, we gotta get the cash up. Gotta buy on a left, and well, you know what they say about buy stations. It's a perfect place in customs for teams to kind of overlook, and they're immediately getting pressured. Yeah, sometimes, you know, talk about classic idioms. The best defense is a good offense. Right now, they're inside top five over on the leaderboard, and playing a somewhat defensive playstyle is not working. Getting slammed left, right, and center just because of their player disadvantage. Destroy gets down. It's going to be all up to Z Lander to keep their dreams alive in this map. Play Ultimately, solid, not going to move the needle that well. much when it comes to the teams on the bubble, but it's still something you need to keep an eye on just to make sure they can grab a couple more points over the next couple maps to make sure they make it to the finals. Because it's Warzone Tiff, anything can happen. But for a team like this in 25th place going into this map, this is a crucial one. There is no more gimmies. There are no more mulligans. You've got to start making a move up the leaderboard, and you've got to do it now. Louis is on four, playing a bit reckless earlier because, well, maybe sometimes you just have to. But a couple more kills this time around than the last several maps. They only had 11.9 points between the last three maps. I can only imagine they will at least double that in this map, regardless of how it ends. Both Team Savvy Ultra is sitting with 54.6 points inside the top three after their map three victory. You know they're feeling pretty good and raided looking like a solo warlord out there with six eliminations map one victor just trying to keep consistent following that eight point average almost eliminations alone at the bare minimum to make it in the top 15 and, and barring anything catastrophic this is a team that will likely qualify i'll go 99.9 .9 <laughs> yeah. especially with that 80 points like that's, you never know anything thinking. could happen 99.9 .9, though it's kind of funny too because like when you follow this pov now given the stakes that are that are at hand here in this tournament format you're following Raiders POV to see who kills him. And now you're seeing yeah. it's Zanks on the other side, another team that's likely <laughs> safe. That's no? going to be a Savvy uh, Ultras team who's sure. also inside the top five. So you're seeing a, a continual cycle of some of these top teams lasting yeah. till the final couple teams. We're down to six total trios left in this lobby. And this could be a massive one for Lola's team, a team that is right around that cutoff point. 18th place, total of over a little over 20 points going into this lobby. This could be a game that could double the points if they can drop a 10 kill victory all three alive and on high ground this is a great spot to be and we saw brolic frying out earlier if he has five six seven eliminations at this point tiff they could be in a really good spot unfortunately they're getting pa out of their pieces of cover here i would say as soon as you say a really good spot the pa comes through and Tommy's team is going to oh, be on the no. other end. They are able to get that opening knock onto Lola's squad. The full doesn't come through, but you know the way Tommy approached this. Such 
great moments, but Lola has just erupted into pure chaos, and now they've got a little bit of this low ground on Tommy's team. And surprisingly, Tommy's team's right in contention with them. They're in 17th place just outside of qualifying. Tommy needs a massive one here. And well, Tiff, you look at his kill total. I think this is the map they've been looking for. A team I knew was going to play high risk, high reward. And apparently, it's not been paying off. That risky factor has been hurting them through the course of the first three maps. Finally, the reward is coming through. Tommy is on 11 eliminations by himself. Make it almost 12. It looks like maybe one of his teammates picked up that one. They've got a massive game at hand, and there's only three teams left. It's going to be massive no matter what. The question is, will they get the 2x multiplier? They're going to have to fight against Lola. They're going to have to fight against the team right behind them and score. This is 17th place versus 18th place. It looks like the third team is in ninth place. That's Scummin' Squad. Who's going to take Matt Four? You got Scummin', Tommy, Lola. on my left. Tommy, though, immediately hits that rotation earlier. But there, the um, if you What's saw a moment earlier, Lola and them had no. already dropped down. But still, it's going to be Brolic who Tommy is Find able to drop the numbers. Yeah. He's trying to stack wow. them in their advantage, but Z-Smith's going to fall. Z-Smith's down, but they have wiped Lola's team. It is now all up to Scummin to stop the terror that uh -huh. is Tommy. If he can stop this 2x multiplier, this is a massive boon for any team trying to qualify because Tommy's going to jump up this leaderboard dramatically, the right but the 2x Nox. will do tons for this team. This could push them from 17th all the way inside, well inside the top 10, potentially even top 5. Huskers is on 4. Tommy's on at least 12. This is a monster game, and it looks like everything's going in their way. No, on Rational's game, able to drop Tommy. Tommy, it's all up the Huskers. We've seen this before. Who's going to win it? Former teammates, scumming, unrational. They go down and their forming, former teammate that is Huskers wins it all in map four. They needed that 2x and it is gigantic, even bigger than I was expecting. That is a 54 point game. Oh boy. Oh. Not a bubble team anymore here for day number one. A banger game. 54 points will shoot them up that leaderboard way above that average needed and that eight point average per game to really stretch that 15th place. Well, you did it in one match.